I have another homework assignment for you, and this is actually a very important one that we'll be using first thing in the morning teachings. And this is um, uh, what John McCransky calls uh, identifying your benefactors. And these benefactors are uh, beings uh, in our lives that we feel, uh, it can be animals also, that we feel uh, have even uh, for a short period of time loved us unconditionally or loved us very wholeheartedly. That beings that have wished for our well-being, really cared about us and wished for our well-being. And sometimes that might be uh, like in your early life that was true and then things got went astray later or something. But you remember, for instance, maybe when you were um, younger that it was like that with a family member, for instance. Or uh, often people come up with school teachers or teachers of some kind or just sometimes even strangers that were, uh, came out of the blue when they were feeling very uh, uh, sad and unhappy and sort of came to their rescue by being kind and helping them out. And many people come up with dogs or pets uh, and they have stories, you know, of the unconditional love of this particular pet. So any of the, any, anyone that you could call your benefactor, meaning uh, that you could close your eyes, as we will be doing, and visualize in front of you th that they're there. And you don't have to have a clear visualization, just a sense that they're there and they're sending you love. And you're, the practice is of opening to receive that love from people that you already trust uh, loved you at that time or continue to love you, whatever it is. It also includes and um, uh, uh, spiritual teachers, or even um, t those uh, teachers uh, like uh, spiritual beings that you uh, just know from stories, such as you know in uh, Tibetan Buddhism, Guru Rinpoche or Chen Rezi or Tara, uh, but it can be. Um, uh, Jesus Christ, it can be any religious figure, it could be Nelson Mandela, a lot of people use His Holiness the Dalai Lama, they have no problem just imagining him caring about them, just because what a guy, you know? <laughs> and um, it's kind of hard to imagine him like uh, smiling like that at everyone until he gets to you, you know, and then... <laughs> So, um, personally, when I do the practice, I use, uh, I use two of my spiritual teachers. And I just, it just, I feel so opened by just feeling that they, that what I consider their love for me or their care for me, their concern for me. And, um, and the purpose of this is that if, without being, Without, ever, without receiving love or the ability to receive love, it's very hard then to send it to others. So this um, receiving love uh, is important and you receive it from your benefactors. And so I'm asking you to think about that overnight and who those uh, benefactors are. And I just was teaching this at Gampo Abbey uh, this winter and most people, decided on a certain person or animal or spiritual teacher or something. Maybe they had three or four. Sometimes it was many, many, many that kept changing, but often it was just uh, stayed the same the whole time, that they just kind of felt they could, they could smile and relax uh, and uh, whenever they thought of these, these uh, people or animals, beings loving them. So that's the homework assignment, the, that and the categories of, of loved one, uh, uh, stranger or neutral person, and difficult people. And, um, and um, to get back to just jumping back again to the topic of equanimity, at the end of the practices, 
you then spread it out to all sentient beings. And that's a definition of fruition equanimity, you know, that you could really feel that kind of love and compassion for all sentient beings. Although, uh, it's very common for people to say, I have no problem doing it for all sentient beings, but I do have a bit of a problem doing it for my mother, something like that. <laughs> so, there's something uh, about uh, making it very personal, very real, and at the same time being able to uh, you know, make it universal and limitless. And the, uh, this image of the diamond that's right with you at all times, that was always in your pocket, is always in your heart, really, is that um, all beings have this capacity. And uh, it's, it's limitless, compa uh, limitless uh, capacity. So, so that's why they're called the four limitless qualities, because they, once they start expanding, they don't have any ending point. It's infinite how far they could expand. It's like saying um, there are smells. There are more smells in the world than, than you will ever smell. There are more sights in the world than you will ever see. There are more tastes in the world than you will ever taste. It's so, the variety of what your sense perceptions could perceive is so vast and limitless. And there is, there is more uh, ability to love than you could ever reach. There is more ability to care about each other than you could ever reach. There is more ability to feel equanimity and uh, joy than you could ever reach. It's just uh, limitless, infinite, boundless. Just because that is the nature of our being. It is uh, uh, like a, a space that expands limitlessly. And then we narrow it down into uh, this very small, uh, fear-based world of um, for and against uh, you're, I like you and I don't like you. I like it and I don't like it. And we make it so pitifully small when it's actually so enormous. As someone said, it's like um, being an astronaut in outer space, uh, looking back at the Earth from the moon and uh, obsessing about a pimple on your chin. <laughs> or worrying about whether you remembered to turn off the heat or something like that, you know, going from something so vast, the potential of the human experience is so vast, to narrowing it down into something because it's safe and predictable, and choosing that over uh, expanding infinitely. So just in closing, I want to say um, uh, that was an introduction to uh, a few words on equanimity and an introduction to the four uh, qualities altogether. But I want to say that um, I consider this uh, a training, a sh brief retreat uh, uh, that is training in uh, bravery, training in exploring the soft spot, the tender spot. Uh, and uh, it is very important training his Holiness the Dalai Lama uh, speaks so much about the need to go beyond us and them, us and them thinking. Us and them thinking is very limited. Going beyond us and them to begin to think in terms of uh, all being in the same boat, which is called planet Earth, and having to work together um, as sisters and brothers, having to uh, collaborate and talk to each other um, in order for the boat not to sink. And uh, he says, uh, uh, we have to go beyond the limited thinking of uh, us and them. And he goes so far as to say in an article I was reading uh, yesterday that he says, um, of course, some of the problems in the world are naturally, uh, natural disasters. Right now, for instance, so many floods, uh, tidal waves, earthquakes, 
um, things of this nature. But he said, uh, the majority of the problems are human-made and, and are not necessary. And he said, they, mostly they come from f the small-minded thinking of us and them, and the polarization that happens from that kind of thinking, and the, um, uh, uh, the amount of, of aggression and violence and cruelty and indifference that comes out of uh, us and them thinking. So he said, and replacing it with uh, a feeling of our sameness, and replacing it with a feeling of, of need, all being part of each other and needing each other and being one uh, family, that we have to start looking at it like that. And I've often told this story that uh, made such an impression on me when I read it years ago, but of uh, one of the astronauts who went to the moon, uh, looking back, and they apparently for both of them it was an a incredible uh, spiritual experience and very um, uh, changed their lives. But one of them wrote that when he looked back at the Earth, it, he saw the absurdity of the us and them thinking. The absurdity of dividing it up into putting lines on the earth, calling it all these different names, and that in itself is not a problem, but the problem being that then they go to war with each other about it. And not to mention, even smaller, you go to war with each other about your religious beliefs, all your different fixed ideas, just uh, us and them, us and them, my side, your side, right and wrong, good and bad. And he just looked back and it was like unfathomable that this one earth uh, where everyone were citizens of this one earth that was just, somehow he just saw that it was all me human made. The, all the problems were human made and, the, and completely unnecessary. And that we needed to uh, work together in order to, for this planet not to um, uh, blow up, you know. So, uh, so His Holiness says that uh, these kind of pra practices, he has a whole program now in schools from uh, beginning with preschool uh, all the way through uh, college level in countries all over the world. This is just starting and he's, it's one of his main initiatives, but to bring teachings on love and compassion into the schools and to teach children and young adults these uh, about love and compassion as, and he says, it is no longer just a spiritual practice to cultivate love and compassion, joy and equanimity. It's a practical necessity for survival. So I'd like, uh, uh, to the degree that you can remember this, for you to do these practices in this, uh, in this um, uh, with this bigger perspective in mind that you are doing something not just to feel good uh, uh, personally, although um, that of course is a side benefit, but uh, that you are uh, uh, see, we, that we begin to see the urgency of spiritual training being inner work that we do in order to become sane, flexible, kind-hearted, open-minded, uh, citizens of this earth, you know. So uh, the practices are extremely important because as long as we stay uh, stuck in our fears and habits and don't give them our compassionate attention and they just begin to rule our lives, uh, then that's what caused the kind of um, pretty drastic situation we find ourselves in right now. And as we see uh, uh, watching the news, that uh, it, there, the uh, uh, aggression is escalating. It seems to be escalating, escalating, escalating. And um, there, there needs to be a greater and greater number of people, such as all of us in this room, and uh, hopefully thousands and millions and trillions of people who begin to see that they have to do the inner work in order to save the planet to be good citizens of this earth. 